and the rebound by Jokic. Suns right now look gassed. Little back to our cut ground. Coming with some heat. Welcome to a Valley Sports Plug Phoenix Suns playoff recap for round two, game one. I'm Chris Patrick, and with me as always is my man, Michael Benjamin, here to break it all down for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at how game one broke down for the Phoenix Suns in Denver against the Nuggets. The Suns held a narrow lead at the end of the first quarter, 32-31. to Unfortunately, they were not able to keep that momentum going in the second, being outscored 37-19, to making the score 51-68 to at the break. The Nuggets firmly in control of this one. In the third quarter, the Suns were able to fight back a little bit, narrowing the deficit by only four points, and it would be 81-94 to going into the fourth. Unfortunately, the Suns just didn't have enough gas in the tank tonight and would drop game one in Denver. The final score, 125-107 to for the Nuggets. But now we'll go ahead and pass it over to Michael Benjamin for an in-depth look at game one. After what seemed like forever, we finally got the matchup that a lot of us have been hoping for against the high-powered Denver Nuggets. And to start this one, with about 2.48 to play, the Suns found themselves down by six, but they played the back and forth game and they ended up taking a one point lead into the second quarter. And after that, they were stuck on 41 points for three straight minutes and outscored 37 to 19, as Chris stated in total in that second quarter, led by Contavious Caldwell Pope and Aaron Gordon and find themselves down 17 at half. And in the second half, every time the Suns had a push or a run to try and get the lead down under double digits, the Nuggets had an answer, whether it was another three or more physical play getting to the foul line. We were still down 13 headed into the fourth. And to be honest, like everybody saw, this one was never really in doubt. The Nuggets used a 14 to zero run starting at the 740 mark to go up by 25. And the Phoenix Suns lose game one, 125 to 107, to go down one nothing at the start of this semifinal series. And Chris, I'm sure we got a lot to talk about tonight, but as the people know, we got three keys of the game. So I want to pass it over to you for number one. Like you said, a lot we could say here, but we got to narrow it down to just the three biggest keys in this game. And no news here, the perimeter defense of the Suns. This has been a problem, and tonight it was just absolutely horrible. They were not closing out on shooters at all. I mean, even Monty acknowledged this in the post game, where at times we weren't even getting a hand up on shooters. It's just absolutely unacceptable when you're letting Jamal Murray score 6 of 10 from the outside, and then also other guys like Caldwell Pope and Aaron Gordon are getting three three-pointers each. Jokic didn't have a great night, but even he splashed one in right over DeAndre Ayton's head. So this is something that we can tighten up. An easy fix. If you find your man, close out and get a hand up. You're not going to be able to stop them all. But if you're trying, you're at least probably going to mitigate a few of those opportunities for them. I mean, game ones are always kind of a feel-out situation, right? And especially when you're going into enemy territory, you're trying to see what that game plan is to start. And obviously for the Nuggets, it was a high-powered three-point attack. And you could even just see from the box score. I mean, the Nuggets in total only make five more shots overall from the Suns. But when you shoot 14 more threes and you make nine more, that's where you find the difference. And the continued tough communication that we were seeing on the outside for wide open shooters is still something that we've been seeing that's been carried over from the end of this season. And it's always a tough way to start a series like that. And I'm sure the Phoenix Suns will figure out some way to scheme on those shooters. 16 of 37, you're not going to see teams shoot 43% that often from outside. But we know how high-powered this Nuggets offense is. So if you're going to continue to trot out that kind of defense, this could be a short series. So, whoo, Chris, we're on to the next. What's key number two from this game one loss? Our second key goes hand in hand with the lack of perimeter defense, and it was just being outgunned. Like you kind of said there, the Nuggets shot 43% from the three-point line, took 17 more shots than the Phoenix Suns did, and were grabbing boards left and right, getting second chance opportunities all over the place. 
I mean, Devin Booker himself only attempted one three-pointer, which he missed. And so the Suns only ended up shooting 30% from the three-point line. Like you had stated as well, the Nuggets aren't going to be able to keep that up, especially if the defense improves. And ideally, we do narrow that down to become closer to the average, which is probably somewhere between 30 and 35 percent. So not to say the Suns did horrible from the three point line, but when you're letting the Nuggets just rein them in, it's going to be difficult and you're going to find yourself fighting uphill the entire way. As they say, you live and die by the three. And tonight the Nuggets were living by the three. Let them fly, as they would say. But I want to kind of look at this in regard to the firepower as the manpower that these teams have going up against each other. You can look at Nikola Jokic. He doesn't have that great of an offensive night. Only 9 of 21. Does score 24 points, but does it everywhere else, right? 19 rebounds, 5 assists, which is kind of low for him as well. But Jamal Murray goes otherworldly. And almost trying to make a statement from the last time the Suns played the Nuggets. While he was hurt and was not part of that series, maybe he was trying to, you know, make an early statement and let everybody know that he's here and ready to go for this one. And then you have guys like Aaron Gordon, who finishes with 23 points and goes 6 of 6 to start the game. Our high-powered guys and Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, they did score tonight, 29 and 27 respectively, but they weren't as efficient and Kevin Durant turned the ball over a lot seven turnovers just not going to get it done and then you're saying well they're out matching us three guys to two what do we get from either DeAndre Ayton and Chris Paul DeAndre Ayton scores 10 points in the first half but for the rest of the way Chris Paul struggles from outside once again only has 11 and don't get me started on this bench once again, Chris. I think we just got to get into the series before we start really diving deep into what the situation is. But we can say really no campaign. Landry Shamit's the first one off the bench. And no Terrence Ross or TJ Warren. But we're going to leave it at that. And let's go ahead and move on into our final key of the game from this game one semifinal loss to the Denver Nuggets. The third and final key has to be the physicality of this Suns team, or really lack thereof. They were getting bullied the entire time. The Nuggets aggressive on both ends. Some fans will say that the Nuggets maybe should have been called for some offensive fouls, but I'm okay with the refs letting them play, and I'm not going to use that as an excuse. When I was thinking about this key, one specific play came to mind where I believe it was in the second quarter, Jokic was backing down Bismack Biamba, which to his defense, Bismack is quite a bit shorter than Nikola Jokic, and he's trying to hold his own. He beats him, and Kevin Durant gets an awesome block on him. What happens? Jokic grabs the rebound anyway, puts it back, and won because Bismack fouled him closing out. So you see how aggressive Jokic is in going after these plays, and then on the other end, Aiton just looked extremely timid at times and often being guarded by guys that were smaller than him. He wasn't covered by Jokic this entire game. I would see plays where he would be fed a great pass on the inside, and instead of going straight up with it, he would put it on the floor, hesitate, and ultimately end up kicking it out more times than not. And again, I don't know if the lack of physicality maybe comes from a lack of conditioning, playing at a high altitude, but even the broadcasters were commenting that the Suns team just looked tired tonight to the point where with five minutes left in the game, Monty throws in the white flag and all of our guys are on the bench and we get Ish Wainwright and Landry Shamit and Terrence Ross seeing his first minutes of the playoffs in garbage time. So ultimately, I think the whole team knows that they have to be more physical going forward or this is going to be a short series. I mean, this is what you expect from a number one overall seed. They're trying to set the example at home the way that we were hoping the Phoenix Suns did in that first round matchup against the Los Angeles Clippers. But they were just there to bully people, man. 11 more total rebounds in the game as a whole. 16 offensive rebounds, which double up the Suns. I mean, at halftime, they out-rebounded them 12-3 to on the offensive boards as well. And you can just look at turnovers as well. The Suns have nine in the first half, 16 total. That comes with a little bit of carelessness, but that also comes with defensive pressure and getting guys out of sync. And you can't blame free throw discrepancy or anything like that. It was 14-13 to total made on both ends. But once again, it's those second-chance opportunities. It's those defensive lapses. 
And defense can come with physicality, Chris. I know you know that. As many times as we've said, most of the times that just comes with hustle and desire, which will transition into physical play. Unfortunately, we have to continue to pick on our guy, DeAndre Ayton, who has seen not even hustling back into a play where Nikola Jokic gets three tip backs at a play, which we eventually do get the ball from, thank goodness. But how does that look, my guy? You can't come out and say that you run on Tesla battery and then go to empty like that on one play. It's just not allowed. So very, very confident this Phoenix Suns team is going to take this one on the chin, make the adjustments they need to, and come out swinging in game two and make this series a dogfight. I mean, this is the number one seeded team for a reason. They came out and showed it tonight. And now if the Suns really want to do this thing, they're going to bounce back and grab game two. But Chris, I'll pass it back over to you for your final thoughts from game one. I'll keep this short and sweet. I mean, there's not much else to say that hasn't already been said, right? So I'll keep it to an old time saying that everyone's heard before. Defense wins championships. And if this team wants to win a championship, we're going to have to step up the defense. We're going to have to be more physical and we're going to have to start gunning. Basically reverse the three keys of this game and turn them into positives. And we have a chance, man. Honestly, not too worried about dropping this first game. We also lost the first game in our last series against the Clippers, and we all know how that turned out. So no need to panic yet. We'll see how game two goes. I would like to come back home with a split series, but even if we're down 0-2, as long as we have a better showing in the next game, keep building on each game and improving, and we'll be right back in this one. You learn from your mistakes, and this team has shown that they have been able to do that especially within the short sample size of Kevin Durant. I mean, if you think about it, this is the second overall loss with him playing with this group. And I'm very confident, as stated once again, they're going to be able to make those adjustments, play more physical, communicate more on defense, and more shots are going to start going in for these other guys. I'm crossing my fingers once again that it's not the off game on game for Chris Paul and he can have some consistency for us and our bench can start to contribute as well. These were some of the question marks we already had from the previous series, but if we want to get through this one, those answers need to be shored up pretty early within this series. Yes, sir. Game two will go down Monday, May 1st, still in Denver, and we'll be sure to keep bringing you recaps the day after. So make sure you tune in, like, and subscribe. For Michael Benjamin, I'm Chris Patrick, and we'll see you next time. Peace.